This is a picture test in practical anatomy. You may use the video as a revision for the topic or as a self-assessment tool. For the purpose of self-assessment, pause the video and spend your own time to read the question and come up with the answer. Then replay the video to confirm your answer and listen to the comments and explanations. Identify the nerve A and identify the structure B. What is its function? And name two tendons passing deep to it. The nerve A is the dorsal cutaneous branch of the ulnar nerve that is given in the forearm and went dorsally to supply the medial third of the hand, dorsum of the hand, and medial one and a half digits ulnar side proximal to their nail beds. B is a thickening of the deep fascia of the forearm that lies obliquely across the extensor surface of the wrist joint. Proximally, it is attached to the radius. Distally, it's attached to the pisiform and tricatral bones on the medial side of the carpal bones. So it lies obliquely. This thickening of the deep fascia is the extensor retinaculum. The extensor retinaculum holds the extensor tendons in position and prevent their popping up or bowstringing during extension. From the deep surface of the retinaculum, fibrous septa pass into the bones of the forearm, dividing the extensor tunnel into six compartments. The lateral one allows the passage of abductor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis. The next compartment allows the tendons of extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis. Next is the groove that lodges the tendon of extensor pollicis longus. And then between this groove and the ulnar border of the radius is a shallow depression for the tendons of extensor digitorum and the deeper lying extensor indices. Over the radioulnar joint, the fifth compartment is located and passing into this compartment is the extensor digiti minimi. The sixth compartment, lastly, is in the groove near the ulnar styloid process and it transmits the tendon of extensor carpi ulnaris. So all these muscles that have been mentioned here, they pass deep to the extensor retinaculum. Identify the nerve A, through which tunnel it passes at this location. List two muscles supplied by the nerve distal to this location. The nerve is the median nerve and it is shown here proximal to the flexor retinaculum, under which it disappears. It disappears passing into the carpal tunnel, which is bridged by the flexor retinaculum. As the nerve arises from the tunnel, it provides a recurrent branch that supplies the three thinner muscles, abductor pollicis brevis, flexor pollicis brevis, and opponent's pollicis that lies in a deeper plane. The nerve also supplies the first two lumbrical muscles, radial lumbrical muscles. The nerve at location A, as you can see it here, is a big nerve. Don't confuse it with the ulnar nerve. The ulnar nerve lies more medially, very close to the pisiform bone here. And the ulnar nerve is accompanied by the ulnar artery. In addition to that, the ulnar nerve does not disappear under the flexor retinaculum because it passes superficial to the flexor retinaculum. That's why it is not trapped like the median nerve in cases of carpal tunnel syndrome. In cyclists, the grip on the handlebars cause compression of which nerve? The grip on the handlebars causes compression on the medial side of the hand and wrist and thus it will cause compression of the ulnar nerve. The ulnar nerve, although it escapes the carpal tunnel because it passes superficial to the flexor retinaculum, but it can be compressed when there is a long-standing pressure on the medial side of the wrist and hand. Symptoms usually begin with a feeling of pins and needles in the ring and little fingers before progressing to a loss of sensation and or impaired motor function of the intrinsic muscles of the hand which are innervated by the ulnar nerve. Remember that the ulnar nerve has a superficial branch that supplies the medial one and a half digits as well as a deeper branch that supplies most of the intrinsic muscles 
of the hand, excluding the ones that are supplied by the median nerve. What is the common name of the three processes indicated by the asterisk? Identify the structure B, name the joint in which it participates. Now, the common name of these three structures is the styloid process. Styloid means resembling a stylus or a pen. So we have a styloid process of the radius, styloid process of the ulna, and a third metacarpal bone has also a styloid process. All are palpable. The styloid process of the radius is usually located at a more distal level to that of the ulna, and it can be palpated in the anatomical snub box. The styloid process of the third metacarpal bone can be felt on the dorsum of the hand about 3 to 4 cm distal to the dorsal tubercle of the radius. The third metatarsal is the only metatarsal that has a styloid process. B is the head of the ulna. It lies next to the styloid process. It articulates with the ulnar notch of the radius at the distal radio ulnar joint. Identify the arterial arch A, which artery serves as its major blood supply. And then identify structure B, list two muscle tendons that pass underneath it. List two carpal bones to which the fibrous structure is attached laterally. This is the superficial palmar arch A. You can see here that it has a superficial position in relation to the muscles. Actually, it lies just underneath the palmar aponeurosis, which has been removed from this dissection. Also, you can note that the ulnar artery, accompanied by the ulnar nerve, passes uh, superficial to the flexor retinaculum, and it is the main contributor to the superficial palmar arch. The arch is completed on the radial side by a superficial palmar branch of the radial artery that is given in the front of the wrist and passes superficial to the flexor retinaculum. This artery is not shown in this dissection. It's a small, tiny artery. That's why the ulnar artery is the main contributor to the superficial palmar arch. Note that the arch gives off common palmar digital branches. These divide to give palmar digital branches along the sides of the fingers. B is the flexor retinaculum, a thickening of the deep fascia of the wrist. Note that it's located in the palm of the hand and not under your wristwatch strap as you might expect. Also note that the muscles of the thenar and hypothenar eminence are partially attached to the retinaculum. Because the carpal bones are shaped so as to form a curve that is concave on the flexor surface, then the attachment of the flexor retinaculum to the most medial and most lateral carpal bones converts the curve into a fibro-osseous tunnel called the carpal tunnel. The most lateral bones to which the retinaculum is attached are the tubercle of the scaphoid and the ridge of the trapezium. On the ulnar side, the flexor retinaculum is attached to the pisiform and the hook of the hamate. The structures that pass through the carpal tunnel, that's to say deep to the retinaculum, are the tendons of flexor carpi radialis in its own compartment, flexor pollicis longus, the flexor tendons of the flexor digitorum superficialis, four of them, and the other four tendons of flexor digitorum profundus. Although not required in the question, but don't forget that the median nerve lies beneath the retinaculum. That's why it might be entrapped and compressed by the crowded contents of the tunnel, resulting in carpal tunnel syndrome. Which anatomical structure is involved in this deformity? This patient has the Putrin's contracture, which is a fibrosing disorder that results in slowly progressive thickening and shortening of the palmar aponeurosis. The palmar aponeurosis by itself is a central thickening of the deep fascia of the palm. So the anatomical entity involved in this deformity is a slip of the palmar aponeurosis. Shortening of this slip results in contracture of the metacarpophalangeal joint. Remember that the distal end of the palmar aponeurosis divides at the roots of the fingers into four bands which pass to the fingers. Each is fused with a fibrous flexor sheath. This condition, the Putrin's contracture, 
usually affect the band which passes to the fourth or the fifth digit or both of them, like we see here in this case, the band to the fifth digit. Identify the nerve A, name two muscles supplied by it. This nerve is given off just distal to the flexor retinaculum. It is folded back toward the thenar muscles from the medial side. In life, it lies along the radial longitudinal crease of the palm, which bounds the thenar eminence. It is the recurrent branch of the median nerve, an important motor branch that supplies the three muscles of the thenar eminence. These are abductor pollicis brevis, flexor pollicis brevis, and opponent's pollicis. Because of the location of the nerve, incisions should not be made along the whole length of the radial longitudinal crease of the palm in order to avoid injury of the recurrent branch of the median nerve. Identify the muscles A and B. What is the nerve supply of each? Muscle A belongs to the hypothenar eminence. Note that it is located deeper than the other two muscles of the eminence, that's to say deeper to flexor digiti minimi and abductor digiti minimi. The muscle is opponent's digiti minimi. Muscle B belongs to the thenar eminence, and it is also located deep to the other muscles of the eminence, that's to say flexor pollicis brevis and abductor pollicis brevis. Muscle B is the opponent's pollicis. Note here that it is attached to the shaft of the thumb metacarpal and not to the proximal phalanx like the two superficial muscles. The same is true for the opponent's digitimi. It is attached to the shaft of the fifth metacarpal bone. Regarding the nerve supply, both muscles conform to the rule that the median nerve supplies the thenar muscles and the ulnar supplies the hypothenar muscles. Specifically, the opponent's pollicis is supplied by the recurrent branch of the median nerve, while the opponent's digiti minimi is supplied by the deep branch of the ulnar nerve. Which muscle is particularly responsible for the movement at the wrist indicated by the arrow? This is a movement of flexion and ulnar deviation or adduction of the wrist. The only muscle that can perform this combination of action is flexor carpi ulnaris. Pure ulnar deviation is produced by flexor and extensor carpi ulnaris together, where extension will cancel out flexion and only ulnar deviation or adduction of the wrist remains. But here we have flexion as well as ulnar deviation, so the muscle is flexor carpi ulnaris.